Okay, we've been playing with the Wandsview webcam here. We're telnetted into it with a root shell. And let's go ahead and look at the camera itself. My daughter is still sleeping. She's going to be up any minute, so I need to finish this video up. Um, this is the main view, view for most browsers. We can zoom in if we need to. Um, if we go back to the main directory here, there's a smartphone view, which is nice. Oh, she's moving. Um, but these buttons are really small, uh, you know, when you're trying to click them on your smartphone. So luckily, it's just HTML with some CSS and some JavaScript for the most part. Things that I love because it's, in my opinion, the best way to make GUI interfaces because it's so easy for someone like me as an end user to change. I mean, I could, if I wanted to make a plugin for my browser here to change stuff, but Luckily, since we have root access, I can change it on the device because making plugins for a mobile browser is kind of non-existent for Chrome at this point, which is what I use on my um, phone and tablet. So as we discussed in previous tutorials, there's a system folder, which has a system folder in it, which has a, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, system folder, which has a www folder in it, which is where all our HTML files are. And looking at these names, it's pretty obvious what they do. There's one here called mobile. Let's go ahead and VI into that using VI as a text editor built in on to the device with BusyBox. It's kind of trimmed down. There's no color coding. Um, the tabs are rather large. Um, and I just realized that my changes that I made that we're going to go over in tutorial were already there. So I removed those so we can go over them. Um, so again, these buttons are pretty small. If we look through the file here, I'm just gonna look for the word left. And right here we can see some jQuery code, some JavaScript calling something, uh, or changing the value of the button. Let's go down a little bit further. Here we go. We actually have the input. So the button is an input button. So let's go ahead and go to the top of the file and search input. Okay, there's the up button, the left button, a stop button, which is commented out, it looked like they were going to have a stop feature for moving the camera, um, and a right button and the down button, and that's it. So good. The only input tags in this uh, interface are the buttons. So we can create a very simple um, CSS line that will modify all the inputs, which are just our buttons. So if I'm going to come back up to the top of the file here, and somewhere in the header, right about here probably. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do style, style, and tab, and unfortunately the default tabs on the camera right now are huge, <laughs> but so things are going to be very indented, but whatever. And we're going to say input, and I can actually write this all on one line because it's so short. So we're going to say look at all the input elements on the page. Then we're going to say font dash size colon 400%. We will save that. Now if we go back to our web interface, they haven't changed. We can even, you know, refresh the page and go back in there. And they still haven't grown. That's because the browser is caching some of that. Um, so it is changing. It will eventually change in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up a um, incognito mode so it loads everything fresh. I'm going to go to that and log in and if I go to smartphone view, look our buttons are way bigger now. That's going to be a lot more convenient on our little cell phones. Uh, but, and they also are kind of stacked. They don't need to be that low because I don't have to scroll down to get them. So let's move them around again. Very simple since everything is plain text because it's just HTML. We're going to come down here and um, let's see. And we have our up. Let's go ahead and just remove this and remove this. Let's go ahead and save that. I'm kind of playing it by ear here. Oh, this is not our incognito mode. Refresh this. Go into. Oh, it moved all the way up there. So let's go ahead and actually undo that. And unfortunately, undo is not implemented 
on the camera, so I can't undo changes. That's what I get for deleting stuff instead of commenting stuff out. Oh, because that's it. I wasn't seeing that uh, TD tag at the end there. Let's go ahead and remove that. And go ahead and go back into here. Go back in and again, stuff I'm not seeing on the side of the screen there. There we go. So now we have very easy left, right. They do work. I'm not going to click them because again, my daughter's sleeping right there and she can hear the camera move if I move it. Um, but they're all much larger buttons all in a row. So they fit onto the screen and I can open it up on my cell phone and easily click and move the camera. And the great thing about this is we can change anything in any of these interfaces because it's just plain text. Uh, and since we have root access, we can do it directly on the camera rather than, you know, pulling down firmware and trying to extract the firmware, making the changes there, recompiling the firmware, uploading it to the device, and being afraid that we just rooted or um, bricked something. So there we go. That was a simple change, just you know, removing some of the the um, table tags there. But you can also change things like up here we have this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Uh, open the image in a new tab. There we go. And I'm actually going to, let's go ahead and save as, I'll save it to uh, my temp folder, sure. Now I'm going to open up GIMP. And I'm going to open up that file. So right there, I can go ahead and let's go ahead and just change the color of it. So I'm going to go hue and saturation, which is not going to work uh, because it is set to uh, image mode is index. So you have, you're very limited on what you can change. We'll change it to RGB. Now I can change the um, hue and saturation. So I can go like this and I can make the writing red. And what I can do is I can save this and put it back on the device. The problem is since we remove the indexing, it has more colors in the image, which is going to increase the size dramatically from like a couple of kilobytes to half a megabyte, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have no room on the device, uh, that causes some problems. If we were to import, actually let me undo a couple of things. Okay, so we're back to the original image. And just give me a second here, I am going to, um, find a photo of something. Let's see. I'm going to say Tux Linux and do a Google image search. So images. Actually, I would prefer an actual photograph to show you more about what I'm talking about. So let me go into my personal photos here. Um, my Google Plus photos. I'm doing everything on a second screen here. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Perfect. File, save image as Ember. Okay, so I'm gonna say open, and here is an image I just got of my daughter laying in her bed. Perfect, right? Because the camera is watching her lay in her bed. So we just got this bed the other day. She was very happy to have a new bed. And um, so let's go ahead and replace this image with a trimmed down version of this image. So first thing is the original image is a width of uh, 960. That's still going to be pretty slim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, image down to probably half that. Let's go uh, with, we'll just say 500. Okay. Scale it, copy it. I'm going to paste it over here. And right away you can see the colors on her face and everything are messed up. That's because of the limited colors in this image. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. And again, I will go into image mode and change it to RGB. I'll paste an image and now the colors are correct. So now I'm going to move that over here and then I'm going to actually uh, go to the background image here, anchor this down. So I'll say uh, two new image, two new layer. In the background layer, I am going to just, oops, switch that, fill it in black. So now, I have this new image of Ember. So I'm going to export that and I'll call it uh, logo head 2gif Crop the image, blah, 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 export. Okay, so now I can close, close GIMP. And if I go into my shell here, 
and I move to my temp directory. So again, bottom screen here is the camera, top screen here is my desktop. You can see we have our two logo images here. If I list out with the file size, uh, logo header, logo head, you can see the original one is 2.9 kilobytes, where the one with the full colors is 25 kilobytes. I could fit that on the camera, but we're already very limited on the space on the camera. So what else could I do to get this image up there without having to put it on the camera? Well, we could use a service if we go to a website such as imgben.org. Of course, I put an image here. It could be deleted, whatever, in the future. It doesn't really matter because I can always change it again in the future. If you have your own server, perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the image of my daughter. I'm going to upload it. I'm going to say keep it there forever and click upload. Now I can right click and say copy image URL. So now instead of putting the image on the device, as long as whatever device I'm looking at it, my desktop, laptop, camera, phone, or tablet, uh, if it has internet access, I can access that image. So let me go ahead and save that view, and I'll clear the screen here, and we'll list out again. Index 1 is the main page. So when we're in this browser here, we're at this main page, it says index .html, but we're actually looking at index one because everything says index.html. So I'm going to vim index one.html, not vim because there's no vim on there, vi, and I'm going to search in here for .jpg or gif, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase that source and replace it with the source online. It doesn't matter that it's not on the device, the web page can grab an image from anywhere. Web pages do that all the time. So I saved that, and if I come back in here and refresh the page, ah, there's a picture of my daughter at the top as the head banner. I would have to change that in other things. If I go in here, it's still that, because if we didn't replace the image on the device, we just replaced what the page is linking to. So anything, all these buttons down here, these buttons, the background image, anything that's an image, we can link to any image on the internet as long as our device that we're viewing it with has access to the internet. So that's a way where you can you know, upgrade the quality of the banner or buttons on this device even though you're very limited on space. But again, you can also compress the image down and copy it over to the device. Since we now have the full version of BusyBox on there, we can use wget to pull images down. We also have the FTP server that we originally used, or sorry, FTP client that we originally used. And you also have Netcat that you can transfer files back and forth with. Now that we have BusyBox on there, we have multiple options to get files on the device. We're just very limited on the space on the device. So, <clears throat> so I showed you a few different things here. I showed you how to change the buttons by changing some of the CSS, remove some of the HTML uh, tags because um, we wanted everything on one line. Uh, and we also linked to new images again for the banner. So if I again go back here, it's my daughter up there. All I have to do is go into this file uh, and I can relink that HTML file to the new image. And as we can see her start to move, getting ready to wake up, I'm going to bring this tutorial to an end. As always, I thank you for watching. Be sure to visit my website. That's filmsbychris.com, Chris with a K. There's a link to that in the description, as well as notes to everything we've done in this tutorial and in this series. So be sure to check out those links. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share this video. All that stuff helps. But also, if you've appreciated these tutorials, um, consider becoming a Patreon supporter over at patreon.com forward slash melx1000. Every little bit helps, and um, I appreciate it. So thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. 
I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.